Welcome back. Well, we have been celebrating it all day, International Women's Day, a day to celebrate the social, economic, cultural and political achievements of women right around the world and to bring attention to female-focused issues. The theme of this year is digital equality, how technology is crucial to advancing women's job opportunities and to safety online. To discuss this, we are joined by a power panel indeed, Future Women founder Helen McCabe, Girl Geek Academy CEO Sarah Moran and Aboriginal activist and sports commentator Marley Silver. Morning. Team, thank you all for being here. Let's go to you first, uh, Helen, because this Future Women has spearheaded the Jobs Academy. Uh, in your view, what's been, I mean, apart from the patriarchy and systemic <laughs> you know, problems, what else has been holding back that sort of equality in the workplace now that we know we needed to get there? Thanks, David. And I did wonder how to answer this question because of that. But um, I think the answer is... Um, flexible work, understanding that women actually need um, often to work only two or three days a week mm -hmm. uh, because they have caring responsibilities. And one of the things we find on the Jobs Academy is that organisations say that they support flexible work and part-time work, but they actually don't. They only support it for Sylvia because they know Sylvia because she's already proven herself. They don't really go that extra mile mm. before you've got the full-time job. So. If I was to say one thing, it is think about your hiring practices. Women still do most of the work at home. We know that, but let's park that for one minute. Mm. Think about three days a week, two days a week. There are a lot of women out there who have got a lot to offer. What about uh, women when they're returning from, say, maternity leave? I know this is a pathway that you've been focused on at Future Women and finding access for women at that time in their life where they feel like professionally they may have stalled and they're trying to re-enter the workforce. What's some of the advice you give to women in that time in their life? Yeah, great question because one of the big challenges we find is that women who take time out to have children, and that's partly because the, the male is more likely to earn more money and we know there is a pay gap. So it falls almost automatically on women to take the time out to raise children. And then their biggest challenge is how do they describe that career gap? Now that career gap can be a year, it can be 10 years, and they really lose confidence, at particularly around explaining that. What I say is that you have transferable skills. You need to know that actually more employers do acknowledge their trans. If you've run a house and a couple of children, you're pretty good at doing a whole bunch of things. So think about your transferable skills, go online, read about how to characterise them because it, it can matter how you describe that career gap and it can make all the difference. Sarah, let's get digital. Um, what, there's a focus on digital equality this year. What is the digital gender gap? And, and, and then how do we improve on that? Yeah, so in Australia, um, only 27% of technologists are women, um, despite 51% of game players being women, um, which is an unknown fact. A lot of gaming, gaming women out there. And so what we have is we have women are consumers of technology. Um, you know, we, we get in and use all of these things, but we're not building it. And unfortunately, only 0.7% of venture capital funding went to women in Australia in 2021, which means all the money went to dudes to go build cool stuff. And, uh, the dudes. The dudes. <laughs> and, the, and women didn't get that funding to be able to build technology that we would like to create. And so what we're doing to address that is we're doing things like running all women hackathons, game jams, um, teaching girls coding. But unfortunately, since the pandemic hit, my organisation, I've had to do this as a side job mm. because the funding isn't there, um, both from corporates and from the government um, to be able to support these programs, which is really disappointing. Yeah. How do we all benefit as a society from having more girls and women in tech? Yeah, so, I mean, the technology we create solves problems for everybody, but diverse teams are just uh, amazing. So my partner, he's, a, he's an iPhone developer, and the number of times he's like, I just wish there were women in the room. Um, you know, he, he complains to me at home about it, but, you know, having more women making decisions, um, having an input into, into what's being created, um, we, we, we think differently, we have different life experiences, and that's really important to see it reflected in the apps on our phones and, and the things that we use every day. Uh, Marley, let's bring you in now. As a sports commentator, how far have we come in establishing more opportunities, not only for women commentating sport, but for women in sport? Yeah, it certainly feels like the last couple of years have been a bit of a, a, a jetpack on, you know, the back of women's sport. I think it was uh, quite 
benefit in a weird way by COVID. We actually saw statistically about 70% of people were reporting that they were watching more women's mm. sport. And that's pretty easy when we've got the likes of, you know, Ash Barty was still competing, won Wimbledon while we were all locked up, Jess Fox, Emma McCann, the, the incredible Olympians we saw. Um, and then now we're seeing this with the NRLW, AFLW, all of those women's codes are, are really growing in such positive ways. Of course, there's still a, a fair way to go when it comes to pay gaps and also just anecdotally the respect that we give to female athletes. It's often still feels like a secondary. Mm. Uh, but I think that what is the most exciting thing and the thing that I love about working in sport is that that for me, we're a sporting nation. It is the platform that we can reach people who are in that kind of camp that otherwise never think about gender. Mm. We, you know, even my dad, bless him, I'll, I'll throw him under the bus a little bit here. <laughs> he was a professional rugby league player and when the NRLW was first coming through, he was very, very anti it. Mm. And now, thanks to a little bit of uh, convincing from myself, he started watching it and he has become this massive advocate for what the girls deserve. And I've seen him change and really think about the gender disparity that still exists. You build the mountain and they will come, right, Absolutely. when it comes to sport. I just want to ask very quickly, we're out of time, but um, you know, we know statistically also that women of colour uh, mm. face even more disadvantages than the rest of us. What does today mean for you as a proud Indigenous woman? I do have to say uh, I've been a part of a lot of International Women's Day things over the last couple of years and the thing that seems to unfortunately not change that often is uh, who, who your panellists are and uh, what the representation looks like at a lot of those events where it is people who are, say, the CEOs and politicians that they like to put up there. I think I've seen a few uh, women in my community also talk about there is too much focus on, you know, those super ambitious mm. women who are in those traditional roles and not valuing mothers and, and community leaders on, on the ground. Yeah. So that's where I see a big disparity. Well, I know Helen's hosting a function tonight where you're handing over the entire floor to women of colour tonight as well and it's such an important part of what today is all about. Thank you all for Thanks coming in and sharing your experiences. We appreciate it. Happy International Women's Day. In 1908, 15,000 women marched through New York City. They were garment workers. Their demands, shorter days, better pay and the right to vote. Demonstrations like this and the many that followed were spurred on by the universal female suffrage movement fighting for women's rights. In 1910, at a socialist conference, March 8 became the official date for International Women's Day, a day for females everywhere to not only celebrate, but advocate for change. An incredible movement that really has been absolutely propelled from decade to decade. And I'm joined by some of the wonderful women in the Today family. Brooke Boney, of course, Sylvia Jeffries and hey, Davina Smith. Morning. It's so wonderful to see you all here. Now, I mean, obviously International Day, Women's Day comes around every year, right? And every year we sort of debate this notion of why it's necessary. Why do you think it is, Brooke? What does it mean to you? You know, this morning I was reflecting on what I was going to say. And, I, you know, I feel overwhelmingly positive And I think, you know, we all are mm. quite fortunate. Yeah. But hearing Sarah Lamarck on speak this morning about violence against women really got me thinking and I think that it's something that we have to remind ourselves it's we have to continue pushing for women's mm. safety and to prevent violence against women you know it's not even we don't feel safe going out at night by ourselves no. or going out for a run early in the morning and, yep. and and I think as lucky as we are in this country they're things that we have to keep reminding ourselves aren't normal. You know, women are three times as likely as men to experience intimate partner violence. Mm -hmm. A woman dies every week because of domestic violence. And of course, the statistics are much higher for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women. Um, and so I think, you know, as, as, as much as I'm grateful for how far we've come, we still do have a lot of work to do. Is there any particular area that you think, Sylvie, that we need to focus on as HU passes? Oh, it's broad. It's wide-ranging, isn't it? You know, you look back at that first march in New York City in 1908 and I think, well, it was only three years ago that we were still paying a G GST on tampons yeah. as though that was some kind of luxury item. Exactly. Um, oh, and that's going to get up here. <laughs> oh, wow. Ooh. Um, minor discount on an essential item. Yeah. Um, but, you, you know, it, to me it's about advocacy for reasons mm. like that. We have to keep using our voices to mm. shine a light on the areas where we still need to improve the situation. That's something that's certainly been instilled in me by my mother, a social worker for her entire working career, mm. who has, you know, she is instinctively an advocate and a voice for people from marginalised backgrounds, for people at the worst times in their lives, the most vulnerable and distressing times in their lives. And it's about using your voice, if you're in a position to do so, 
to propel others forward, to give them a boost, yeah. to lift them and to give them opportunities where perhaps they don't feel like they can see it. Yeah, and that's the thing, isn't it, that empowerment of passing that through to the generations. I mean, Devena, you're a mother as well. Is that really a factor for you to try and empower your kids? Yeah, I think it weighs heavily on you. I've got two little girls, so you're conscious of that you want to make things better for them, that they don't feel the challenges that you felt growing mm. up. And we've all had knockbacks and setbacks in our life. They will as well. Um, but it's about raising strong, independent women who have less fear in their lives. Mm. And I think as a mum, you become, I don't know, Sylvia, you probably say as well, you become almost tribal and protective mm -hmm. about women, mm. not just other mothers, but, but women in general, of their rights and their, their reason for standing up. Mm -hmm. And you, you get a stronger voice the older you get mm. to speak up and to my mother's group there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> God for so the mother's tribal. group. Yeah. Yeah. Can I say something as well? You know, one thing that I always reflect on, because I've got um, nieces as well, is that I don't want them to grow up and for us to say to them, oh, sorry you don't get paid the same and yeah. sorry it's still dangerous for mm. you to go out. Mm. We didn't want to push that hard because it made us feel uncomfortable or because it was too difficult for us to do. Like, we owe it to them to push as hard as mm. we possibly can to to close some of those gaps. Mm. And I think what's important too this year with the theme is um, equity versus equality. And there is a difference, and I think it's understanding that difference because, you know, we're all born the same, but where we are in our lives in that particular time is different, right? And so it's about making sure that we're all on an even playing field. I mean, you only need to look at Iran, for example, where... You know, school kids, particularly young girls at school, are getting poisoned at the moment just for going to school. I mean, it's mm. there is so much inequity, inequality that exists in the world, and I think today really highlights that we need to empower women to be able to take a stand and actually then do what they want to do with their life and be free to make those decisions, mm. those choices. And embracing that equity is what they say. Like mm. everyone has, we've all got unique, different stories and different backgrounds. Mm. That brings something to the table here. That another workplace won't have. Mm. So the, the more you can tap into everyone's individual story and embrace that and give mm. them opportunities, it was Michelle Williams who said in her Oscar speech, yeah. what can I do to help you succeed? Well, because advocacy in that respect takes so many forms, so many different yeah. forms. It's not just sitting here on the telly and speaking to a national audience yeah. about where we can improve, th improve things. It's going to your boss today and singing the praises of a female yeah, colleague yeah. and saying, mm. here are some of her achievements and this is why she's making our lives better every single day in what she does. It's writing to your local MP and saying, I will vote for someone who increases the pay of early childhood mm. educators because they are mm -hmm. crucial to the development of my children. They are overworked and underpaid. Mm. Same goes for nurses and midwives, by the way, mm. in these female-dominated industries right. that are the backbone of our society. Absolutely. And the, and, and the industries that really give back to mm. the future generation as well. It comes back to exactly what we're talking about here. And you don't have to take on the world as well. Like You could be sitting... I know there are days where I'm having a flat day and I'm struggling and I haven't slept the night before. Mm. And Sylvia just knows that. And you can find <laughs> well, that. <laughs> and that goes two ways, by the way. <laughs> you, you've got each other's back and you look after each other. Yeah. You don't have to be tapping under the high bosses. You can just be sitting beside a woman and looking out for them and yeah. being their cheer squad. Yeah, and understanding that no two women have the same story, right? No. You yeah. Know, yeah. You can but be they have the can... same sleep deprivation. <laughs> <laughs> I we will the, not contest that. Yeah. <laughs> the good news is today, because it's International Women's Day, we all get feet foot rubs. Oh, and yeah, I excellent. think we're allowed to have right. burgers and cupcakes and stuff. Oh, so no, I don't really... want to see another cupcake. And nobody, <laughs> nobody can touch my feet today. Yeah. <laughs> They're a bit Straight to the main meal. Let's yeah. just get some fries. Maybe just... <laughs> yeah. but it's, great. it's great that we can sit here and have this conversation yeah. and, and that's mm -hmm. what today is about. I think it is amplifying these ideas but there are 364 other days of yeah. the year yeah. mm. where we all have to get out and walk this talk and make these ideas a reality as And well. by the way, we could have brought in any one of the women at 9 oh, to have sure. this discussion, you know, yeah. and it would be pretty empowering. So yeah. really, really appreciate you guys giving us some Pleasure. time. Thank you. Hey there, Today fans, Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my goodness, Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?